So the summer is here, the sun is out, it's the perfect opportunity for you to try some photochemistry with your classes. Behind my trusty mini whiteboard here, I have a piece of paper on which we've painted uh, some cyanotype mixture, and in front of that I've placed an acetate with an image of the structure of Prussian blue, the compound that we're going to make. Let's see what happens when I remove the mini whiteboard and expose it to the sun over about a 10 minute period. As you can see, over the course of the last few minutes, we've gone from a green to a blue color. What we need to do next is take this indoors, rinse off any unreacted dye, and make sure that we're left only with the uh, Prussian blue fixed to the paper. And then I'll show you how I made up the mixture and applied it in order to produce this really cool, simple little demonstration. So I found some slightly dimmer conditions to talk about the actual chemistry and how you go about making some of this paper. And then we can go in and actually see if we can develop the print that we just made. So the Herschel cyanotype mixture basically requires a mixture of citrate and iron-3 ions in the presence of some potassium hexacyanofluorate 3. So what I have here is 20 ml of water into which I've dissolved 0.6 grams of citric acid and 0.6 grams of iron-3 chloride hexahydrate. It's important to use the hydrated form of this. The citric acid we're then going to neutralize with some ammonium carbonate. Um, and at this small scale, you can actually go and chuck in a decent amount of this all together. Uh, if you follow an Eclipse recipe, they do recommend sort of doing this uh, in small sections, but we're using only a very small quantity of liquid. Um, and so the foaming is not too bad. And now we've got some ammonium citrate in there with our iron-3 chloride. All we need to do is add one gram of our potassium hexacyanoferrate 3 and we're good to go. Um, that will produce a greenish coloured solution and that you can paint straight onto some paper. I find, again, that the magic whiteboards, the, the little sort of erasers that come with them, those, bit, those sponges, they're pretty good for actually painting this straight onto a piece of paper and you might want a hairdryer to help you to speed up uh, getting that paper nice and dry. In dim conditions this stuff is going to be pretty stable, it'll hang around um, for a decent uh, length of time in the dark um, but obviously you want to be keeping it away from direct sunlight until you're ready to actually do the experiment. So now that we've got an idea about what's going on here let's go and see if we can develop the print that we took earlier and all I'm going to need to do there is rinse off the unreacted citrate, iron-3 chloride etc because what takes place is that in the presence of the sunlight the iron-3 from the iron-3 chloride will be reduced whilst the citrate is oxidized and then we get our mixed oxidation complex the Prussian blue which, do, which precipitates out essentially as a solid um, meaning that the rest of the soluble materials can just be rinsed away in some water and we should be left with a nice blue permanent print of whatever we were actually taking an image of. So let's go and rinse that off and take a look at the product. So once your exposure is complete you want to be able to rinse off any unreacted starting materials. Um, I actually expected to leave this out for about 10 minutes in the end um, I actually needed about three minutes uh, because uh, up until then I've been working indoors. It's surprising actually how much of an effect the, uh, the drop-off from the UV can be coming through uh, some glass. So do be aware of that, but you can eyeball it and you can see that um, I was able to actually get a reasonably accurate exposure of my structure of Prussian blue here. So what we essentially want to do is just leave that rinsing for a couple of minutes. Um, I find that a gratinol tray leaning in the sink like this so it can flow through the handle area works quite well. Um, and we just want to make sure that we thoroughly washed away any of the unreacted starting material and the image after that will be fairly stable um, for the long run. And there we go, a nice permanent recording of our structure of Prussian blue here, taken in cyanotype. 
So now we've covered the basics of getting a nice print. Um, let me share with you a few of my mistakes that I've done in the past or some other ideas that might help you get the best results with your class. Now the first thing you want to make sure of is that before you do a print, um, the paper is as dry as possible. If you can't get the paper dry within, let's say for example you want to do everything within one lesson, um, then I might suggest rather than putting an acetate over the top that you want to actually go for something where you're laying things on the ground. So you can see I have a print here on the top right where I've laid some pencils and some rulers um, and we've got some protractors and all of those things are sort of showing up quite well. That's something that you can achieve reasonably well. If you go for this object here up on the top left, what I essentially did was collected some leaves and some grass, but you can see that before I did the final rinsing step, I didn't actually properly wait for it to dry. And so a lot of the um, blue color actually rinsed out. It wasn't firmly set and firmly precipitated and binded with the, the paper. So you will lose a lot of the blue color if you try and rinse off too quickly. Um, if you really want to see the color change in one lesson, potentially that you can then protect the uh, paper in the dark, leave it to dry out before doing the final rinse and revealing the end firm fixed product to your class the next time. Similarly, you can see kind of down on the bottom left here, um, I tried to get a acetate result here with a piece of coral and you'll notice that there's some striations here. Essentially, this is what was happening where it wasn't able to fully dry out from underneath the acetate sheet. And so we've got these sort of markings here associated with where the um, acetate was allowing it to dry because there was a little bit of throughput of air or not. Um, similarly, down on the bottom right hand and corner, again, I didn't really let this one fully set. So in terms of tips to make sure you're getting the best possible results from this experiment, make sure your paper is as dry as possible before you do it. If you can't wait, make sure you leave it on a flat surface and put things, objects down on top of it that are going to allow it to dry around them. Um, and then if it's not fully, fully dry, make sure that you uh, leave some time for it to dry before you do the rinse off. Other than that, this is a pretty bomb proof experiment. Um, the other thing to make sure of is just, you really do need some strong sunlight for this to, to work in a sensible time frame. So have a think about that and make sure that you time your experiment appropriately. Um, it's such a joy to actually experiment and try and work out what kind of images you can get from this. So give it a go and to perhaps share some of the images you collect with us down in the comments below. See you next time.